The month of December is now known as transfer portal season in college football. And the Longhorns lost to QB, but we all understand why. Plus, it's state championship week up in Arlington at Jerry World, and there are a few storylines we should all keep an eye on. Let's talk about it. We got to continue to adapt, and but it's again, I, I love Malik to death. I love the opportunity to coach him. Like I said, he was a great teammate, and, and wish him nothing but the best of luck. Yeah, that was uh, Steve Sarkeesian in Houston with an interview regarding the on the day that Malik Murphy entered the transfer portal. Before we get started, definitely want to give you uh, all of our sponsors a shout out. Of course, the two you see on the corners of the screen, Shoal Creek Saloon. It's an ATX original. Lots of storylines there. Hopefully one day we can tell those. But uh, they are the unofficial home to UT football games when you're not at the stadium and all season long for UT men's and women's basketball. If you're not at the arena or on oh, well, one of the games on the road, be sure to go to Shoal Creek Saloon. Delicious food and the beverages are mucho frio. An honest plumbing and air. A name change. But they're still the great, same great service. And it's also where a handshake still means something. All right, Malik Murphy. You know, it, it's it's kind of bittersweet when you see this because the transfer portal season. It is when you see guys making some really difficult decisions. Well, Malik Murphy made the decision earlier this week, just a couple of, actually a day ago. And Malik Murphy is a guy was somewhat of a, a, very much a fan favorite. And if it wasn't for Malik Murphy this year, I don't know if Texas would be in the position that they're in, especially when Quinn Ewers went down with an injury and Malik Murphy had to jump into two games this year and win those two games uh, against Brigham Young in Kansas State. Kansas State was very important. Of course, any win is important. Very intelligent, very large, massive QB, a pocket passer, um, incredible smile, smart. Um, he has a lot of talent, highly recruited out of the state of California. But in those two games, 477 yards passing and three touchdowns passing, uh, all in while Quinn Ewers was out uh, with that injury, that shoulder sprain. But Malik made this, submitted this tweet. It's basically saying, I would love to thank all of you, all the Texas fans, the entire Longhorn community for accepting and supporting me. Um, the time I had on the 40 acres will live with me forever, and I'm extremely grateful to have played in the burnt orange. He's not lying. And, and from what I've heard through people close to the program and also those who know him, very intelligent guy. Players loved him. But the hard part about this, the transfer portal, it's a blessing. But at the same time, the transfer portal puts young men, and in, in this case, but young men, women in other and female sports, but in this case, young men, um, they're in a difficult position. Because in my opinion, and I think you would agree with me, Malik Murphy should be able to enjoy the college football playoff run with his teammates. Instead, the deadline for the portal. He had to make his decision. He had to start taking visits and figuring out where he's going to land. I have no idea where he's going to land. Some people are saying Oregon, but Oregon already has all these quarterbacks lined up. But the fact that you put this pressure on, I know life being a grown-up is full of pressure every day, but to make this, this have to force to make this type of decision in order to find the home the second home that he will have as a quarterback in the right program, he's having to leave his team and not take part in the college football playoff. I will say this to Malik Murphy. You were an asset, young man. You're just a great ambassador for the Texas Longhorn brand and for college football in general. You are what is great about college football. You had to wait, wait your turn. And then you took advantage of it and led your team to two victories. I mean, that's that speaks volumes and it's hard. It's really difficult to see these young men like Malik having to make that type of decision and not 
participate uh, in perhaps the two most important games, at, especially since 2009, because they're two wins away from winning a national championship. But uh, I would rest assured he will receive a Big 12 championship ring. Jonathan Brooks, we all know, um, tore his knee, ACL injury, out for the year. Um, it was really hard to watch that against TCU. And the running back room did a great job filling in for him. And of course, uh, him dressing out at halftime to come in uh, for that last play was a beautiful suggestion by Steve Sarkeesian and his staff. But you've got to wonder now, will Jonathan Brooks return next season? Very tough decision. Or does he right now, while his stock is high, although right now having to rehabilitate from that torn ligament in his knee, which is going to take a while, but the rehabilitation process now and, and the medical care has shortened the return, much like Tommy John in baseball. These injuries, the, the time frame has shortened somewhat. But now you've got to figure if you're Jonathan Brooks, do you consider entering your name into the NFL draft because his stock is so high? What if he returns next year and doesn't have the same type of production? I mean, if Jay Brooks did not experience that injury, more than likely wins the Doak Walker Award, and he's in the Heisman discussion. And it was it was tough to see. It's tough to see any player experience that. So – Think about that. Not that you, what I or you think should have any bearing or will it have any bearing on Jay Brooks' decision, but I'm starting to lean toward him, really. It would not surprise me if he enters the NFL draft. All right, another thing to consider is heading up to Arlington, to Jerry World, to watch Texas high school football at its best. I mean, you could watch it across the country on Bally Sports and it's, it's amazing. The production, Craig Way, the voice of every game, does such a great job. He's a Man K VIP alumni, by the way. But that entire team does a phenomenal job. Formerly Fox Southwest, now Bally Sports Southwest. They do a great job at telling all the stories of all these teams. And they do a phenomenal job. 12 games and the production value that goes into that production value is very high. But one angle to look for is Jermichael Finley's son. Jermichael Finley, the former Longhorn tight end grade in the middle 2000s, uh, was on that team that uh, was a red shirt during that year in which Texas won the national championship. But this is he and his son when they visited Texas. Um, Caden Finley of Alito. And if you're not aware about Alito, they've won 11 state championships and I believe four of the last five, if they win, if they win Saturday night, excuse me, Friday night against Smithson Valley, which is north of San Antonio, they will win their 12th state championship. That's a, that's a record, I believe, in the UIL. And that'd be five of the last six state championships. Alito, just right outside the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In incredible program, but that's... Jermichael on the back, his son, Caden, very similar talent and skill sets Caden has compared to his dad. I mean, Caden, I would venture to say, probably has room to grow right now. He's still a pretty good-sized young man, uh, 6'1", 185. He's class of 2026, and it's just getting started. But I would venture to say that he is a Texas lean right now. And what if, just think about this, consider this. The value of Jermichael becoming a part of the program again in some form or shape like a, a coach or some type of some type of role on Steve Sarkeesian's staff, Jermichael finishing up his degree at Texas after a really good NFL career, unfortunately, um, that ended due to a, a, an injury. Um, but just keep an eye on that. That, that. I love that in the barber chair at the UT complex, but the Finley, uh, Jermichael Finley's son, Caden. All right. Another angle to look forward to that has a tie to Austin. 
and San Marcos at uh, the former Southwest Texas. It's Claude Mathis. If you look at recent history, the dominance by South Oak Cliff and their head coach, uh, Jason Todd, going for a three-peat. South Oak Cliff, they're going for a three-peat. And then Reginald Samples at Duncanville and DeSoto, where Claude Mathis is. Those three have really dominated the scene. And, of course, South Lake Carroll still there with uh, Riley Dodge, Todd Dodge's son. But those three D- DFW powers – more than likely will win uh, stay all three win state championships again. And Duncanville has to get past uh, Galena Park North Shore. But DeSoto, their coach, Claude Mathis, friend of mine, friend of the program here, if you will, um, he was asked about those two, uh, that being Jason Todd and Reginald Samples in episode 332. Um, about how what they mean to him and because they all played a role in his career and his growth. And this is a little clip from Mathis talking about uh, uh, Jason Todd and the godfather of high school football in Dallas-Fort Worth, Reginald Samples. You know, I I was in college. I want to say my first year in college, and I was still a a football rat like I am right now. Love football. I, I just love it. And I used to go watch all kinds of high school games that are around. And I went and watched him play when he was at Baylor, when he was at Lincoln. And I didn't know I was going to have episodes going against him as a as a coach. He <laughs> coached against him. And lo and behold, the future brought me to Dallas at to DeSoto. And boom, I started going against Reginald Samples when he was at Skyline. And I learned a lot. I really did. Um he took him to the woodshed the first time around, <laughs> and I learned from that right there. And but he's a he's a he's a guy that you can learn a lot from, and then I did, I really did. He's a guy that I respect very dearly. He's a guy that I think that you know they call him they don't call him the Godfather for nothing, and he deserves everything he gets. And I was so happy for him last year when he won his first title, because people can get that stigma off his back that he can't yeah. win a big one, and he did. So I was very honored to uh, to to say that I I know him and. I was so happy for him when he won one. Um, me and Coach Todd, you know, me and Coach Todd, we used to battle, man. I mean, we used to like each other a lot. We didn't because he was at SOC. I was here, and it was amongst what people said. I mean, instead right. of me and him sitting down talking and going over things together, we were just, you know, letting other people be in between us. And when this state run, this state run came about with us, we, we finally had a chance to talk. And, man, we had some great conversations. And now me and him are really good friends right now. Um, And also for the Texas High School Football State Championships, there are two Austin area-based officiating crews um, who will be officiating the game as I recorded this on uh, Thursday night. And then on Friday morning, I believe it's a 4A Division I game. To be selected as an officiating staff is a high honor. It is more than just a bucket list item. It's kind of like the Super Bowl of officiating at the high school level. You guys have a wonderful weekend, and don't forget on Sunday, possibly Monday at noon, uh, the pass rush with Stevie Lee. And enjoy every moment of the holidays with your friends, family, as we count down uh, toward the holidays. Uh, Hanukkah ends tonight, on Thursday night, as I'm recording this. And when in doubt, when in doubt, My piece of advice, when in doubt, it's always good to talk about it.